so i will be starting now the activity the activity of metals now reactivity of metals as i have already told that metals have the ability to lose electron they lose electron and they form stable ions now all the metals they react to a different extent means those metals which readily lose electrons are said to be more reactive or reactive i can say reactive and which lose electrons less readily you can see them to be less reactive or unreactive some metals are unreactive we'll see them also and then we'll come to know why they are unreactive so basically depending upon their tendencies they are said to be reactive less reactive or unreactive this is a comparative term so here reactivity of metals shows the comparative reactivity of metals among themselves so we will see a small reactivity series and according to that we will understand ki which metals are more reactive and which are less reactive here we are taking the comparative series on the basis of the hydrogen scale okay here hydrogen is considered to be a scale and the metals which will be placed above hydrogen will be more reactive and the metals which will be placed after hydrogen will be less reactive okay lithium potassium barium sodium calcium magnesium aluminium zinc iron nickel tin lead then the comparison we are doing it with hydrogen the metals above hydrogen are all said to be more reactive then hydrogen and the metals below hydrogen are less reactive then hydrogen copper i'm writing all the symbols so you should know the symbols as well of the elements mercury then silver gold and platinum we have taken some metals and then we have categorized their reactivity actually there are many metals you can't take all the metals and make a reactivity series some generally used metals which are used in our daily life commonly used metals and then we have drawn a reactivity series of these metals here we can see the <coughs> metal which is most reactive has been placed at the top and we are doing the comparison with the hydrogen your hydrogen is taken as the base of comparison and those metals which are above hydrogen they are more reactive you can say them that from going up to down you are from top to bottom in a reactivity series the reactivity of metals decreases okay so the metals which are placed at the bottom or below hydrogen are less reactive than the metals which are placed above hydrogen now what about the metals that are placed above hydrogen in that also the metal which is at the top of the metal from which we are comparing then it is more reactive from that metal for example here i'll take a case of magnesium and iron now you can see magnesium is been placed above iron okay so magnesium and iron in the reactivity series we can compare their positions and then we can know whether which metal is more reactive than the other here magnesium is more reactive and iron is less reactive okay
so this is a comparative term just by comparison we can say that which metal is more reactive than the other metal okay now when the metal is more reactive it will lose electron easily and so it will be a good reducing agent so we can see that the reducing character it also decreases down the group the order of reducing character also decreases so we can say that sodium is having a good reducing power then lead tin okay now the two terms sodium and calcium here many times we find in a reactivity series that calcium is placed above sodium so it's not the less they are having comparative you can say very nearby difference in their reducing nature and their characters so that's why there is a very small difference you can consider that sodium is more reactive than calcium now what about the metals which are placed below the reactivity series that is below hydrogen when i talk about copper mercury silver then gold and platinum platinum is least reactive means it will be the last metal to react with the other metal it is highly non reactive you can say that okay that is why only we see that we find lumps of gold okay most of the metals they occur in the form of compound but gold and silver or platinum you don't so from this comparative term we will see the order of their reactivities that is which metal is more reactive and which is least okay now from this conclusion we have drawn that there are some reactions by which we have drawn this reactivity series that is when one metal displaces another metal then it means that the first metal was more reactive than the second metal okay here i'll take again an example and we'll have a good explanation about this displacement reaction now you will be considering why different reactivity series difference in their reactivity all our metals all should react similarly but that is the property all metals cannot react in a similar manner okay all elements they have different properties so the metals also among them also there is different properties the tendency to donate electron their size and various other characters which play an important role in their reactivity okay so now we will be discuss discussing about the displacement reaction now as the name suggests displacement okay same is the meaning of the reaction also that one metal displaces displaces another metal okay now the metal which will be more reactive will be displacing the less reactive metal okay so you can see more reactive metal or the metal which is higher in the reactivity series will displace the metal which is lower in the reactivity now now for example we take zinc plus copper sulfate okay copper sulfate is an aqueous solution we are taking and zinc is in the form of a rod okay here you can also draw pictorial view that will be more nice for you to see suppose i take a beaker okay now here i have copper sulfate solution okay i'll draw it with here suppose this is a copper sulfate solution and now i am immersing in it a zinc rod okay now what happens in this reaction it is noteworthy now we'll what we'll find that after some time what will happen that this blue color of the solution this will change okay and there will be formation of zinc sulfate solution okay that is copper will be replaced by zinc and there will be formation of zinc sulfate and 
copper. What will be happening in the beaker if we draw it and see? It will be like this. Copper will be deposited at the bottom and there will be solution of zinc sulfate. You can see the change in color. Zinc sulfate and here copper is deposited at the Okay, this is copper metal. So this is the basic reaction what happens. You can just compare the reactivity series and then you can see whether the metal will be displaced or not. We will take one, two examples more and we will discuss them. It will be. For example, now I take a metal such as magnesium. Magnesium when treated with ferrous sulfate. That is FeSO4 solution. Then what will happen? Will magnesium displace iron? Yes. So magnesium is higher in reactivity series than iron and so it will be displaced. Here you will see there will be formation of magnesium sulfate plus iron. Okay. So we can see that the metals higher in the reactivity series are displacing the metals which are lower in the reactivity series. Now coming to the next part that is reaction with acid also we can see that metals are displacing the hydrogen which are at the top of the reactivity series. Suppose I talk about aluminium. Aluminium on reaction with HCl that is hydrochloric acid then it will form AlCl3 okay, plus H2. Now here we can see that aluminium is being is displacing hydrogen and there is release of hydrogen gas as aluminium is on the top of the series. But if you see it with copper the similar reaction will not happen and no hydrogen gas will be produced because copper comes below hydrogen in the reactivity series. Now if I take an example of copper plus iron sulfate or we can say ferrous sulfate. Uh, there is a beaker. This is a beaker and in this beaker I have iron sulfate. That is ferrous sulfate. Okay. FeSO4. Now if I insert a zinc rod in this. Okay. Just tell me the reaction what will happen. This is a homework for you that uh, what will be the product of this reaction. Okay. So there is a zinc rod in this beaker and the solution is iron sulfate. Okay. This is first and the second one is there is a beaker and it is having and it is having copper sulfate solution okay and I have immersed a silver rod in it then what will be the product and the last homework for you in another beaker I have taken Zn SO4 another beaker I have taken Zn SO4 and I have immersed a tin rod okay. so this is a simple experiment till uh, actually it can be viewed more properly by experiment but uh, over here we can consider this diagrammatic view and just you take the note of the reactivity series and then you will be able to solve this problem I think so do you want more homework? Okay, I'll give you one more. I hope that you will do this. I will surely ask you whether you have done or not. Uh, I'll take AgNO3. AgNO3. And here now I'll immerse. A lead rod. Okay. So if the displacement reaction was sufficient to explain you then you will be I think so able to do this problem. It's very interesting and it sounds very nice. So hope that you will do it.